Euclidean geometry rider 11. So we have an example. You don't have the reminders as we've had the previous riders because there's not enough space. I have a bit of a space problem on the screen for this diagram. We have a circle. GF is not a tangent, doesn't say so, but we have a pair of parallel lines, we have a pair of equal line segments, and we have some labeled line segments. Reading through that, you can see it implies that these are all straight lines. So we have to prove GFM equals LKM. And that should strike you between the eyes immediately if you know your theorems. There is the corresponding angle set up. So, corresponding angles, KL, parallel to FG. Now we have to prove GH equals Y, and in previous videos I've said a very good technique in your thought process, which we'll do at the bottom of the page now, is say, well, what is GH equal to? What is GH, is GH equal to? Well, GH equals LH. It's given. Or, half LG. Now why would I say half LG? Well, have a look at the diagram there. There's the hint. LG is a segment within a proportional intercept theorem situation where because of these parallel lines ML L over LG equals MK over K. Better still, LG, because that's the one we're finding, over ML equals KF over MK. There it is there. Proportional intercept theorem. Prop int e. And if we substitute the values of x and y, we end up with LG being equal to 2y, and that means we can find GH. So, let's have a look at it now. Let's go through it. There we are. Our proportional intercept theorem statement. Notice LG on top. LG over ML equals KF over MK. Proportional intercept theorem. Substitute the values for X and Y and we end up with LG being equal to 2Y. Now we need to reason to the fact that GH is equal to Y. So we have a pair of equal line segments which means it's equal to half LG and we've already said that LG is 2Y so it's equal to Y. Proof concluded. Now we have to prove two triangles similar. So there we are, as I've suggested before. Mark them with color. It's much easier to see. You can pick up the common angles and that sort of thing. Now in the interest of geometry, not waiting for the geometry to come to you, when you're proving two angles similar, you say, well, what angles are likely to be equal? Well, we can already see one pair. M belongs to both. So we list, we say, well, this is what's likely to happen. F2 is likely to be equal to G, and that whole obtuse angle is likely to be equal to this obtuse angle. Well, the first one's straightforward. They copy. I can't see why F2 equals G directly, so therefore I go through that same pattern. What is F2 equal to? And there's the hint. If you know your theorems, pretty easy. As soon as I see cyclic quads, I look for an exterior angle. It's very useful. F2 is equal to L1, exterior angle cyclic quad. Now we ask, is L1 equal to G? Because we had F2 equal to L1. We need F2 equal to G, so we need G equal to L1 as well. So is L1 equal to G? And of course, we have the same corresponding angles set up. Yes, corresponding angles, parallel lines. Third one, as always, angle sum triangle. So our proof in the triangles. One, our common angle. Two, our mini proof. F2 is L1, exterior angle cyclic quad. L1 is G, corresponding angles, parallel lines, therefore F2 equals G. That shouldn't be there, that proven. It's silly having it there. I don't know why it's there, but it shouldn't be there. But if you put it, it doesn't matter. Three, angle sub triangle. Therefore, the triangles are similar. Now remember, remember to write them in the correct order. M equals M. 
F in that triangle equals G in that triangle, H in that triangle equals F in this triangle. And your case for similarity, angle, angle, angle. Alright, so now we have to show that GF over FA equals 3X over 2Y. My eyes immediately go to this and say, do I have a GF over FH? GF, GF, well, second third over second third FH, yes, so it must come from that, surely. So I'm going to write the similarity statement, and there are the lines in proportion there. So now I'm going to take one pair of those, which I think might be useful. So let's take MF over MH. And we can find them in terms of x and y. x plus 2x. We're just about breaking mf down into mk plus kf and mh down into ml plus lh. And they're the actual measurements we know. So we can do our proof. So therefore it follows, and we should put that to the fussy markers, equals that equals 3x over 2y, proof done. Wow, show that y over x equals root 3 over 2. So let's go back to that. I think we can use that rather. We need an equation in x and y, because notice, that's my thought process. I say, well, the only x and y is here, so perhaps if I can have x, only in an equation and solve it, I hope to get this. This is based my thought process on problem solving on. Always hope. Start, dive into the water and hope you get there. This will give us a useful one. If you look at that, we have 3y over 3x equals 3x over 2y. There we are. And that gives us y squared over x squared. Notice I particularly chose these. When we went here, this useful one here, I said, well, I need a y squared, I need an x squared. So therefore, which of these has a y above, x below, x above, y below, or vice versa? And that's how I picked that up. And so therefore, we have that. Which y squared over x squared equals 3 over 2, Square root y over x equals the square root of 3 over 2. And we don't introduce the plus or minus because it's length of line.